Yep. <laughs> Good morning, St. John's and friends, uh, in person, in the driveway, and online. We're glad to be with you this morning. If somebody's parking back there, we have space. You can come around by the garage, at least two spaces that way, at least two spaces down here. I know nobody wants to sit in the front row, but we'll make exceptions now, okay? Plenty of room. All right. Good. Well, good morning, and, good morning and welcome to worship. And, you know, we're blessed with a lovely building, and we look forward to being able to be back in it one day. But this is a lovely sanctuary, too, out in God's creation. And so when, when it's nice on Saturday evening, we'll do this at 5 when it's nice on Sunday morning, we'll do this at 9.45. And uh, we might get out on the grass one of these Sundays, too. So um, just, just watch the uh, Facebook, watch your emails, uh, call the church office answering machine, and we'll keep you updated on what the plan is for the weekend. And like we said before, we can't plan too far ahead because we're pretty much dependent on the weather. So a special thanks to all our assistants this morning. Marsha brought her keyboard, Cassie singing, Joel's assisting, Will and Kelly were supposed to be ushers for May, so they're ushering today, and Jenny is our recorder, so uh, thank you. And you folks who are worshiping online today, uh, we know this is, might, might have different sound quality for you. This is an experiment. Uh, we hope it's working. We think we've got a good feed, but you let us know, and we'll, we're trying to make it the best we can. Uh, special thanks from Scott Deschant. Scott was uh, in the hospital this week for bypass surgery, and he's home and doing well. He appreciates the prayers. Tonight, Sunday school is meeting on Zoom at 7 o'clock. Uh, same link we sent you a week or two ago, or text me if you need that link. It's been fun to have some Sunday school families on together. We played a Kahoot game, the other, a Kahoot Bible quiz the other night. If you never heard of Kahoot, it's a fun kind of game show sort of uh, quiz online for teaching. Uh, youth will Zoom at 7.30, so if you have any teenager at home, try to connect them with Michael and Cassidy at 7.30. I have some, uh, a real deep sadness to share today. Uh, Ron Bastian, a friend of St. John's, worships with us uh, Saturday nights and sometimes early Sunday, always by himself, uh, passed away suddenly on Thursday, must have suffered cardiac arrest while um, up at his place up north. And uh, very, very sad. Ron was a dear friend, um, good guy, seemed to be in great health. Um, just a reminder of, of how uh, precious and fragile each day's gift of life is. Uh, no funeral plans yet, but thank you for remembering his family and prayers. As a, a, a bonus for coming to worship this morning, if anybody wants to get out of their vehicles later and pull garlic mustard, <laughs> we have a crop of garlic mustard that just needs to go away. And it's one of those, the harvest is plentiful, the labors are few. I think we could do some social distancing. I got a few, glo we got gloves if you need them. It's not painful stuff, it's just an invasive species, and it's all under the trees down there. So anytime this week anybody wants to come and pull, you can do that. If anybody wants to stay today, we've got bags right inside the door, and uh, we'll, we'll have a garlic pulling party and uh, take care of God's creation that way a little bit. All right. Thank you for letting me share, and now we'll sing.
trying to be a, a fashion model on Sunday mornings, but I had to wear this uh, beautiful Tanzanian shirt that was given to me when our group visited Ulanga Parish in Tanzania 11 years ago. And uh, they, they love beautiful colors, they're beautiful artists and artisans, and they love to give gifts. And this song we just sang, it was the gift that they... Um, they sang to us at the airport at 11 o'clock at night when we arrived in this otherwise deserted airport with very few lights. A choir had come from one of the churches to sing to our, our greater Milwaukee Synod people, in Christ there is no east and west, in perfect English. So uh, I always have uh, special memories in my heart when we sing this song. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The word is near you. On, on your, your lips and, and in, in your heart. heart. If you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord. And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. Faith comes from what is heard. And, and what, what is heard comes, comes through the word of Christ. Christ. together. Lord Jesus Christ, who, who prayed, prayed for your disciples that they might be one, even as you are one with the Father, draw us to yourself, that in common love and obedience to you, we may be united to one another in the fellowship of the one Spirit, that the world may believe that you are Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Cassie's going to read the first reading from the book of Acts, the first chapter. And this is the story of the ascension in Acts. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, 
Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoted themselves to prayer, together with the certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter, beginning with the first verse. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. This is, again, part of Jesus' farewell to the disciples on the night before his death. We overhear the prayer Jesus prays, especially the part that his followers might be one. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Boys and girls who are uh, watching at home, we want to sing for you. You got, you got that song, Cassie? Yeah. Jesus loves, loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Boys and girls, can you go find a coin somewhere? Who's got a coin? Find a coin in your house, and then I want you to look real closely at it, okay? When you find that coin, I want you to look at the words that are on it. I think this is on all of our U.S. coins. Um, somewhere is are the words in God we trust. And then somewhere is also this saying, it's a Latin saying, the letter E, the word pluribus, and the word unum. Am I pronouncing that right? Um, I think it's E Pluribus Unum. And that's been on all our coins for as long as I know. And it's a Latin phrase. So you and I don't speak those uh, words every day. We don't maybe know what they mean every day. But it's, it means something like this. It means something like, out of many people, one. Like one country. Out of many people, one community. Now, those aren't the words of Jesus, but that's the prayer of Jesus that, that 
we would be united as one, as, as God's family on earth, as God's people, the church, as we would say brothers and sisters in the family of Jesus. Jesus' prayer is that we be united as one. And that's, um, that's a beautiful thought and not such an easy thing because we like to, um, sometimes we like to be connected with other people and like on a team or, uh, you know, as a family group or maybe as a class at school, we like to be connected. Other times we like to be kind of independent. We like to do our own thing and think our own thoughts and make our own plans. And so um, we, we, we need both. We need that sense to be persons, the individuals that God has made us, the one-of-a-kind person that we are. We also need to figure out how, how Jesus brings us together, how to work together. And this, this time of this virus is a good time for us to really think about, pray about working together and asking Jesus to show us, show us what that's like. Uh, how do we be one? How can we be one? And what are the, what are the blessings of that? So let's, let's pray for people around the world and for us to be one today. Lord Jesus, you pray that your followers might be one. So we pray for your church around the world. We pray for our state and our nation. Uh, we pray for us to be one with creation. We hear the birds singing this morning. Uh, we feel the breeze blowing this morning. Uh, we know things are growing and, and living and adapting this morning. So we pray, Lord, that we might learn and value and contribute to, to that oneness you desire for us. Amen. Grace to you and peace from Jesus who prayed that his followers might be one. Amen. We started the season of Lent with our, uh, remember our Lenten series was on the I Am statements from the Gospel of John. Yes, it got interrupted a little by the virus, but uh, we got to do those, you know, I am the good shepherd, I am the light, I am the bread of life. All those things from the Gospel of John. And when we started it, we noted that the Gospel of John is shallow enough for a child to wade in and deep enough for an elephant to swim in. Or I've heard it another way, deep enough to drown an elephant. Uh, the Gospel of John is simple and easy to understand, and it's deep and hard to comprehend. And this takes us back today to the night before Jesus' death, to a reading that takes some twists and turns, like happens a lot of times in John. And we get the privilege of listening in, of listening in as Jesus prays for his disciples. And to be sure, Jesus is praying his hearts out. What do we hear Jesus praying for on their behalf? I think I hear Jesus praying that they, that they get it. That after the three years they've spent side by side... After the three years they've been watching him work and paying attention to his teachings, that all of that might sink in so that they can grasp that Jesus has revealed to them everything they need to know about God, that, that they would know God's love and God's truth and God's power and God's mercy and God's justice. And so that with those questions answered, they might go on living lives that reflect God's love and God's truth and God's mercy and God's power and God's justice. This is what real life, eternal life is about, Jesus insists. That these followers might know God and know that they're in close relationship with the one true God who sent Jesus into the world. That's what life is according to the Gospel of John. What else is Jesus praying for? He's praying for God's protection on those disciples. Well, what kind of protection? That they might 
somehow make it through life without so many scars or scratches or scares, a protection that no evil or tragedy ever come near their dwelling, that they might experience the promise of Psalm 91 that, that sounds a lot like the guardian angel who will catch you if you fall. Well, that would all be about physical protection, right? The kind of thing offered by body armor and bodyguards. And, and no doubt those who followed in Jesus' footsteps were going to face physical risks. They were. But I'm pretty sure Jesus is praying for something more than physical protection. When he asks God to protect them, this is the wording. Protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. This is the Lord's prayer in the Gospel of John. There's no Our Father who art in heaven in the Gospel of John. This is the Lord's prayer, if you will. This is that the prayer that they may be one as Jesus and the Father are one, that these disciples and all future disciples might be so closely connected to each other that they might always know friendship, they might always know what it means to be cared for, might always have someone encouraging them and holding them accountable to their true identity as children of God and servants of Christ. Protect them in your name which you have given me, that they may be united as one, as we are one. That's what Jesus prays. What kind of protection could that offer? Well, could it offer protection against selfish interests that can get out of control? The kind of protection that could, the kind of selfish interest that could otherwise ruin teamwork or community building? Could Jesus be praying for protection from the overwhelming stress that comes when you feel like you're all alone, like you have to do it all yourself, sink or swim in faith and in life all by yourself? Could Jesus be asking for protection that his disciples might be united as one so that egos don't get in the way of his mission, so that fears don't lead to throwing in the towel, so that the ones who are quicker to speak up or louder to speak don't take away from the ones who speak up more cautiously or more carefully. You can be sure that among those 12 disciples there were at least 12 different personalities, at least 12 different sets of ambitions, at least 12 different kinds of strengths, at least 12 different blind spots, and at least 12 different ideas of how to carry on the work of Jesus. Would they be able to pull together and work together for the glory of God? Or would all the usual human failings of sinfulness and jealousy and impatience lead them down the wrong path? Jesus prays that his followers might be united as one. And since that prayer is a long way from being answered, I figure Jesus is still praying. We're, we're singing a song today that puts the words um, uh, of what could be some of our deepest longings or else some of our most impossible wishes to music. We'll sing, blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. The unity of heart and mind is like to that above. Before our Father's throne, we pour our ardent prayers. Our fears, our hopes, our aims are one, our comforts and our cares. This is a good time to stop and consider if what we're singing is also what we're praying for, and if, if what we're praying for is also what we're working for, and if what we're working for is also what Jesus was praying for, do we want to be as closely united with God as Jesus is? Do we want to be as closely connected to one another as Jesus was connected to those 12 disciples? How far are we willing to go to share our hopes and our fears our comforts and our cares. And, and then since we're brought into the family of Jesus to keep, not to keep the love of God all to ourselves, but to share it with others, how close do we want to be with all the other people that God sent Jesus into the world for? This strange and difficult time we're living in 
is as good a time to any as any to ask the big questions that we're usually too busy to ask, or the hard questions which, when things are sailing along normally, are so easy to ignore. We're dealing with a common enemy to the whole human race, one, one that affects every race, every culture, every age, every religion, every nation, every gender, every ideology. Not that it impacts everyone equally, but that it affects us all. And thankfully, Jesus is praying for us. I have to believe he's praying that the world would be united as one against this threat to life. I believe we are united as a church. And I'm thankful that we're finding ways to care for each other and ways to worship and ways to hear God's word and ways to serve and ways to teach that don't require us being in the building right now. I think I can say that we're largely united as a community. We're thanking and appreciating those, those many workers who we're now calling heroes. Uh, we're finding ways to support students. We're finding ways to support businesses. This physical distancing and this wearing of masks and washing of hands, we're not doing this just for ourselves and our health, but for those around us, and, and not just for our household, but for those we don't even know. I wish I could say I believed we were united as a nation or that the nations of the world were united as a whole. That's not the case. But I do believe Jesus is praying for us, praying that we'll get it, praying that we might really be in this fight together, praying that each of us can grasp that yours and my well-being in, is inevitably tied to our neighbor's well-being, that the well-being of St. John's or our ELCA is, of course, tied to the well-being of the whole Christian community and even the whole faith community, praying that we in America would see that our freedoms and securities and our economy is always tied to the freedom and security and economies of our sisters and brothers across the land and around the world. Jesus is praying for us that we might be united as one. Are we willing to be part of the answer to his prayer? Amen. Let's sing. Church Jesus, but sometimes we fail to believe it. 
And so we focus more on what divides us than on your call and the unconditional welcome that joins us. May your spirit flow through us to bind and connect us in ways that neither our diversity nor our self-righteousness nor our sin can separate. We are your body, Jesus, but sometimes we fail to act like it. And so we grow more concerned with ourselves than the others you call us to serve. May your grace and compassion flow through us to heal and embrace all who are broken and wounded. We are your messengers, Jesus, but sometimes it's easier to carry bad news or no news than to challenge the powers that be or to oppose injustice with the message of the gospel. May your prophetic voice be proclaimed in us in ways that encourage the despairing and liberate the oppressed and hold the powerful accountable. Forgive us when we fail to be who we are, who you have called us to be, and teach us to live and to love as your presence in this world. Hear our prayers today especially for all the victims of the coronavirus, for all who have given their lives in our nation's wars and conflicts, and for those near and dear to us, especially Kurt, Scott, Mary, Mary Lynn, Barb, David, Amanda, Stella, and those we name out louder in our hearts. We give you thanks for the life and friendship of Ron Bastian and ask you to surround his loved ones with your comforting spirit and with resurrection hope. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And God, we remember our friends around the world, our Pastor Elias and the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Tanzania, our brothers and sisters at Ulanga Parish, our neighbors at All People's Church, we thank you for these partners in ministry near and far and ask that uh, we might be one in spirit and one in mission with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus, who can make us one. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. You can give a toot to the people next to you. <laughs> Will and Kelly are going to gather offerings. If you brought one, fine. If you've mailed it in or you're on, on, on uh, electronic giving, that's fine. Thank you. do communion in your vehicles and some of you have seen and used these these little pre-filled grape juice cups 
I'm gonna give you a little demonstration. Not, not quite. Um, I'm gonna give you a little demonstration on how they work because they're just a little tricky. So um, they have two seals on them. And the first seal is, is kind of, is actually clear. And it's, it's um, real, real thin. If you pull that seal off, it will get you that little wafer. And then the, the lavender seal will open the grape juice. I know they're not perfectly convenient, but they're just about as sanitary as we can do. So uh, at communion time, the ushers will bring them to the car and uh, you just like say we need two or we need three or four, however many you need, and they'll hand them to you in the car. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we them, lift them to, to the, the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to, to give, give God, God thanks and, and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, make us one and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ will strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God, the giver of all life and the maker of all things, we thank you for this day, for the community we share, for the oneness we have in Christ, and for this gift of life and salvation. Send us out into the world this week to share your light and truth and love with all. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For our closing song, we're going to remember it's Memorial Day weekend. And let this song be a, a, thank, a song of thanks and a prayer for our nation as well. in worship. Let's thank our worship helpers today. And I forgot to thank the guys sitting next to me who loaned me the chancel in the pulpit for today. So thank you, Paul, for bringing your truck over again. Go in peace, stay well, serve your neighbor and the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.